so we've got the, the, the sunset, which is the assignment uh, for today or for this week. Um, there we go, some stars and a falling star as well. And when we uh, render out the animation with uh, Command Enter or Control Enter on the Windows machine, you will get uh, this animation. Good night, Australia, and good morning, Rotterdam. Um, so that's the, the thing that we're uh, about to make from this uh, this startup. So I already made some uh, some layers, including the the Dutch windmills, um, which are gonna gonna turn. Uh, but first, let's pay attention to the to the sun and make that move with a motion tween. Um, so I'm gonna select the the sun and make it move for about well let's say uh, 90 frames if that's okay and of course you can alter it later on so i'm pressing the f5 my keyboard or right click and insert frame um, and of course everything else will disappear in my animation because uh, the sun is the only one that has got that amount of frames so i'm going to select the lower layers and uh, hit f5 as well and the one above, which will give me machinery for the whole duration of the uh, uh, of the animation. And of course, we're gonna uh, add in a motion tween to uh, to see the sun move later on. And the cool thing about the motion tween is that uh, Animate will make the keyframes for you. So if I uh, set my playhead on frame 80 and move my sun way below. The horizon. Um, it will give us the uh, 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 the tween in between already, and you can see by the dots. The dots are corresponding to the frames. That every single dot is the the same distance. So it's a linear animation, and the uh, the speed is exactly the same uh, the whole duration of the film. And the cool thing about animators, and that's that's I think why I think it's a, a really good animation tool, is because when you double click on your motion tween, it will open up the, the curves which you can uh, use to make your animation uh, way more better. So you can play with the speed uh, of the of the animation and of course the duration by uh, by altering the frame, uh, uh, the, the length of the the frames. Um, but there are also uh, some uh, already pre-made eases. Which you can use. So no ease at all. It's a linear line from uh, start to finish. Um, but you could do uh, a stop and start. So uh, let's say a slow in, and that will alter the movement of the animation. Um, so that's something you could uh, you could do. Uh, you could let the sun uh, bounce like this, and that will change the curve as well. So it's gonna. Um, a bounce on this side or a bounce in so it will start quickly and then end bouncing at the end um, so that's pretty cool or let's say uh, let's do a simple one like a slow uh, slow in so every uh, distance between the frames is uh, huge at first and really small at the end so it will uh, move way quicker and you can see the, the curve over here as well when you're done with the uh, uh, um, with the curves you can double click your uh, tween again and it will close and give your your interface back um, and then the movement has been has been made and you can uh, see the animation I hope it plays back in uh, connect correctly slow in and goes faster and faster so that's the animation now of course the, there's only one uh, sunset a day unfortunately i love them um, but when you hit uh, command enter or control enter and you uh, play back your uh, your animation It will continuously play the animation, um, and I'd like to to end it and uh, and stop the animation at uh, at the end. Uh, and in order to do that, I need to make an an, an action layer. So we're going to do a little bit of scripting, really a little bit. 
um, by adding an extra layer on top which I'm going to name action and it allows me to uh, uh, to make another keyframe at the end of the animation where I want to uh, stop the animation so I'm going to right click insert the keyframe there we go now we've got a really tiny keyframe uh, and where we can uh, uh, apply an action on that will give us this uh, screen and it's just as simple as a stop like this and it will stop your animation at the end so command enter again there we go and the animation stops the cool thing is that when you want to uh, make the uh, the windmills work as well so we want to uh, let them uh, rotate the the blades or the wicks of the uh, the windmill uh, they will continue so if you make the windmills uh, inside of a movie clip symbol um, those will continue so the the animation timeline itself will stop um, but when we make the blades uh, rotate in a movie clip they will continue so that's pretty cool so I already made this uh, into uh, a windmill uh, with the blades separately um, so I can uh, make those rotate now, all I need to do to make those rotations is right click my timeline or the uh, or the wicks of the windmill and create a motion tween and then when you select your uh, timeline and go to the properties of the timeline you can uh, you can rotate those uh, uh, a, sh uh, a certain amount of times so let's say uh, one time in the, the full duration of 120 frames there's already a keyframe been made so we've got one full rotation in 120 frames but when we take a look at it in the final project with command or control enter so rendering it out again the sun will stop and the blades will continue um, and then there was a, a falling star as well in the animation oh yeah movie clip doesn't play back in in animate itself so uh, you will see the blades rotating in the in the final product so i've got a, a falling star uh, layer and we can also uh, let an object move along a line along a path um, so this is a really a linear uh, uh, line that has been made between two keyframes uh, for the sun um, but when you want to make a, a star fall down along a path or let a butterfly move along a path or whatever you'd like you can use this technique um, so I'm gonna um, make a new layer right above the falling star and that's gonna be my path for the star and I'm just gonna uh, draw a line straight line at first where I want to uh, to let the star drop. I'm gonna select my selection tool again and uh, just come right near, uh, really near to the to the line. Drag it aside, and that will uh, give me a nice uh, arc. And now I can con uh, convert this layer into a motion path or a guide, actually. So right click the layer, make it into turn it into a guide, and just selecting the uh, the falling star and drag it a little bit upward so it will snap onto the, the path layer. And now uh, animate knows that the, the falling star will need to follow the path. Um, but in order to do that, it will need to have a tween uh, to understand. So right click the frame span and create a classic tween that's the only one that's available at this moment so we need to create a classic tween and make another keyframe at the end of the tween because that's something that uh, that's different with the, uh, the normal tween if you will so I'm gonna hit F6 to make a keyframe 
and that will give you an arrow in between those two keyframes and it's just as simple as uh, selecting the star moving it to the end of the uh, of the line uh, that's hard to tell it uh, <laughs> hill dropping it onto the line at the end of the animation and in the first keyframe you need to select the star again sorry about that I've lost my uh, my star and let's uh, put it uh, right here at the end of the the stage and now when the star is snapped on the starting point of the line and on the end point of the line at, at the end of the animation it will follow the line and because of the fact that it's a guide layer it will not render out so it's going to be uh, uh, hidden in the final animation but of course you can hide it as well by using the, the hide option over here and then it still will continue falling down and you can make a wish now So that's something that you can do as well with your animation. Um, so now that's uh, this is the thing that we've got. Now the sun and the star are moving at the same time. Of course, I don't want to show everything at first at a, in one time. So I could also say, well, let's select this keyframe of the falling star and just drag it upwards a couple of frames so let's uh, say 25 frames so the star won't be here at first and then it will start and follow the sun so that's the that's the way to uh, to make a, a guide layer uh, a motion path as, as uh, um, for the star uh, one cool extra option for the for the tween is uh, when you select the tween and go to uh, the properties um, you could also uh, enable the option orient to path so in that way the, the star will rotate a bit uh, in the direction of the line um, which is uh, really convenient when you're uh, uh, animating a plane or something uh, when it's into a looping it will stay in the, the, the correct uh, rotation So and now when we look at uh, the final uh, animation, um, there has been uh, made uh, a tween for the, uh, the text layers as well. Um, they are converted to uh, uh, a symbol already. And when we take a look at the, uh, uh, the ease options, you could open up those layers as well. Um, there's been made uh, a bouncing effect on the uh, the Good Night Australia uh, text layer, so that can that can be done. And of course, there are some effects as well uh, been made on the on the sun. Um, so when we take a look, uh, take a final look at the sun as well um, in uh, inside of the properties. Um, I've added a, a glow effect and a blur effect and because of the fact that, that this, uh, this assignment needs to be done in an ActionScript 3 uh, document you've got uh, lots of, uh, of uh, op options available but when you need to, uh, to render out your animation um, in, uh, in HTML5 for instance and you start up uh, with a, a, a HTML5 canvas um, these options will differ um, so you need to, to check which uh, which option you can use uh, for what type of output. Um, so uh, for this option, uh, for this animation, it's best to start off your uh, your project in an ActionScript 3 environment in order to use all of the of the options that are available. And then finally, one final look at the uh, the animation. That's this part. So yeah, there was a question how do I uh, how did I make these stars appear uh, well there are several te techniques to do so um, but I'll explain how I did it 
Um, so I'm gonna make the uh, the frames again with F5 until frame number 80 to see the whole animation uh, until the end. And not at the end of the animation, but let's say about frame 65, I want this I want the sky to color dark. Um, so I'm gonna hit F6 to make a keyframe, or right click insert keyframe, and I'm gonna make the uh, the sky uh, <laughs> way more darker. Uh, not black, but as dark as blue as it can get, like this. Um, so frame 64 is light blue, 65 is dark blue. But when I make a uh, shape tween in between, it will color dark when the sun sets. So that's how the dark sky appeared. Now how do I uh, show the, the stars um, in a typical natural way? Well, I make use of the uh, masking option inside of Animate. So I'm gonna make a new layer on top of the night layer. And let's call it mask. And inside of this, uh, uh, this layer, I'm gonna make uh, an oval um, without a line. And the oval is something like, uh, like this. Doesn't really matter, I'm gonna hide the, the layers above. I don't want to see those. Um, and when the, cell, uh, when the sun sets, I want to make the, uh, the oval uh, as a mask bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, so when the sky is uh, all darkish blue, I'm gonna make uh, another keyframe, F6, right click and make a shape tween in between. And of course I'm gonna alter the size of the, uh, of the oval. So I'm gonna make the oval bigger and bigger. And move it as well. to fill the whole sky um, and when I make and when I convert this layer into a mask a mask layer it will attach the layer below and it will show several stars at a time because of the fact that the mask is growing it will pop up more and more stars in the end And of course, I could make, uh, and of course, I could have made a frame by frame animation to pop up the stars, but this technique is way faster to do so. So that's the mystery behind the uh, <laughs> the appearing of the stars. There you go. So this is the end of uh, class number four. See you again next week in class number five with other awesome animation techniques. Bye bye.